Welcome to Mining the Gold. Scripture's truths are like nuggets of gold in a reserve. To be its best, gold must be mined, refined, and designed as bullion, coins, jewelry, and the like. To get the best from the truth of scripture, it too must be mined, refined, and designed. Mined as we apply it to daily life situations. Refined as we determine which biblical precepts carry more weight than our cultural practices. And designed for us as family members, neighbors, members of the community at large, as we forge the relationship we get to enjoy with our God. I'm Denise Watts, author of Mining the Gold and your teaching host for today's session. And I'm George Irving of Cleaning G Services, LLC. George, thank you so much for investing these moments to be with us and prepare these sessions that our audience might hear and learn more of the gold that God has placed in you. And to our audience, welcome. Thank you for coming to join us as we look together into God's word. Today's lesson comes from chapter four of Mining the Gold on the Holy Spirit. Our topic is topic 19, the Holy Spirit seals believers. Hello. Talking. Do I need to hit okay? Yes. It, it, yeah. Okay. Also, any noises that you make will switch my camera back to you because it's on speaker mode. So that's just a PS, <laughs> more fun for us. Okay. Welcome to Mining the Gold. Scripture's truths are like nuggets of gold in a reserve. To be its best, gold must be mined, refined, and designed as bullion, coins, jewelry, and the like. To get the best from the truth of scripture, it too must be mined, refined, and designed. Mined as we apply it to daily life situations. Refined as we determine which biblical precepts carry more weight than our cultural practices. And designed for us as family members, neighbors, members of the community at large, as we forge the relationship we get to enjoy with our God. I'm Denise Watts, author of Mining the Gold and your teaching host for today's session. And I'm George Irving of Cleaning G Services, LLC. George, thank you so much for investing these moments to be with us and prepare these sessions that our audience might hear and learn more of the gold that God has placed in you. And to our audience, welcome. Thank you for coming to join us as we look together into God's word. Okay, this is the first shift. There's Kit and Cat. Mm, don't do that. You no, know, you could do that. Take this off the screen. And here we go. Today's lesson comes from chapter four of Mining the Gold on the Holy Spirit. Our topic is topic 19, the Holy Spirit seals believers. 
we're using Ephesians 1, 13 and 14 from the New International. I'm sorry. We are using Ephesians 1, verses 13 and 14 from the New American Standard Bible. It reads, in him, you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is given as a pledge of our inheritance with a view to the redemption of God's own possession, to the praise of his glory. One of the favorite tactics of Hollywood television involved locking the good guy or friends of the good guy in the bank vault, which always had an airtight seal. The storyline unfolded around the efforts of the hero to locate and rescue the poor victims before suffocation took his or her life. To this day, banks have a vault as do other structures. But other than serving as potential death traps to television shows, what is the purpose of sealing something in a vault? I am so glad you asked. Items of tremendous value were sealed away in a vault or some other location to protect them from damage, deterioration, or theft. Once in an airtight vault, whatever was sealed could only be reached by the owner or at the owner's instruction. When Paul says to us through the Ephesian church that you were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit, he is declaring just how safe how secure we are when we are in Jesus. The Holy Spirit dwelling in you is your seal, keeping you in Jesus. You, as a Christ follower, have such tremendous value in the sight of God. Those words are re worth repeating even before the sentence is complete. You, as a Christ follower, have such tremendous value in the sight of God that he has sealed you in Christ with an unbreakable seal. Your soul is free from the threat of damage, deterioration, or theft. That's today's mining of the gold of God's word. Wow. That is such an interesting way of looking at things that you never looked at before. And it has shown me some things as you were speaking. It opened my eyes to some things when I go back to the scripture, when you illustrate the words in him you also after listening to the message of truth the gospel of your salvation so as i look at the scripture in him it shows me development it shows me how to pay attention to what i'm listening to and it shows me how to be honest in the truth of what I'm listening to. It has shown me a value of how to really believe and seal things in him because without him, we're nothing. Mm -hmm. It shows me on what he gives me to give others because of the inheritance we do together. I found it so intriguing that the redemption of freedom of Christ, that it gets to glorify and give him the praises of what he has done for us. 
the thing the thing I like about this, I mean, I, I grew up in church and I grew up all my life hearing people say things like, they get on my nerves, but I'm gonna have to love them if I wanna get to heaven. And I'm like, is your destination in heaven so uncertain that it depends on who gets on your nerves on a given day and how you respond? No, we are sealed in Christ. It's airtight. No, you know, nothing can hurt my relationship to him. My soul is safe. And yes, I do need to learn to love, be, respond lovingly to those people who annoy me and say weird things and, and insensitive things. And I, I do need to learn, you know, that what's not mine is not mine and I need to leave it alone. I need to grow in that. But I am going to heaven. Because one day, God sealed me in Jesus. Nothing else that I do gets me to heaven. And, and I, I just hope, long pray, that as people read this or hear this, that they will understand we are no longer once in Christ. We are no longer struggling to get to heaven. We are free to bring heaven to earth as we grow in our relationship with Christ. I really like that. It really shows character. And it also allows me to see what we must do on earth as I'm preparing myself for heaven. Mm -hmm it really gets to see yourself again back into the glorification and the redemption of what he has done and what he has given us to do. The scripture really glorifies his name. And, in, and as you become, as I love saying, be the church before going to church. It shows me value of who I'm giving myself to when I get to church. And when I see these scriptures, it opens up in a way to see the Holy Spirit being promised to you to give it to someone else. And it seals. I love the part when you said that the nagging or looking for other things that people that you may not like about a person or a person says something about you. It's interesting as we use the word gossip. And it tries to shift your Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And God has a way of really, truly exploring the truth in you to pass on to somebody in love who really needs that true love. I, I have truly learned to understand the importance on the journey of seeing Christ in myself. Mm -hmm. And them words, again, in him, the word in him. It's not of me, it's me in him. Yes. That it relates to me. You also, it clarifies and dignifies after you have truly listened to the message of truth. Yeah. See, the word is coming from God. That's what I love about the book of John. It says, in the word was God. See, his word never dies. And I love that his word would never change. Because in the beginning, we know that that word was something in the beginning. And he was developing something for us to see. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact, as we were seeing, he was displaying something so true that sometimes people don't see the, the magnitude of multiplication versus the division we do on earth. Mm -hmm. And we, so, all, go ahead. We, all, we all have our own ways of seeing things. But if we take time to really have those real conversations and develop that love of unity, we can really touch and agree on something if we start relaying with each other in true love. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And the, the, that simple phrase in him, you know, so many people want to accuse Christ followers of some sort of exclusivity. But in him are two of the most inclusive words I've ever seen because it's now you and Christ, nothing else matters. And so wherever you are in life, Jesus says, I am the way to eternal life. And so all you have to do is say, okay, since you're the way, I give myself to you. Let him work out the details of what that means for your other alliances and allegiances. But it is wide open to everyone who will come into Christ to have the seal that takes us to eternal life. Yeah. Yes, that is so true. And as I look and I thought about it as you were speaking, the phrase in him again, it reminds me of saying, you get out of the way and let him get in the way. Mm -hmm. Let him be the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the truth Good. and the light. Because yeah. no man can come to the Father but through him. Yeah. Amen. Don't argue. Just say, okay, then, since you're the only way, get me there, please. Yes, yes. And he yes. will gladly do the rest of the process, opening our hearts to following him more than any religion, any denomination, any institution that first and foremost, we follow him and he will place us where he wants to be for his purpose. I mean, there's some, there, there was one denomination. I don't, I'll go ahead and do it. But um, there was one denomination. They put out a magazine. You could get this free magazine when I was a child. And I subscribed to this magazine. Now, for the sake of clarity, it is, I'm not talking about Jehovah's Witnesses right now. So don't even take your mind there. It, it was a, a different denomination. They sent out these magazines and I got them. And I thank God that I had already been reading the Bible for myself because as I was reading these magazines, I was reading that this is not Bible. This is not in, in line with the words of scripture. And so I you know, stopped my subscription, left it alone. And I'm here to tell you, golly, 50 plus years later, I met someone who was a member of the, the group that had been sending out those magazines. And I just asked him, I said, so, you know, I told him my story and I said, what's going on with this group? And here's what he said. God infiltrated that group and led the leader to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And that group is now being, has now been retaught and is now functioning as a Christ following set of people. So sometimes we're in stuff that's not quite, not quite following Christ. They want to be, but they're not quite. And it may very well be that God has placed us there to be in Christ and introduce them to Christ in a more viable way. That's, that's the op op option we, we can't control, but God will do it. So I always say, first and foremost, find Christ. Give him your life and let him order your steps for his purpose from that on. Yes, yes, yeah. When you think about order of the steps, you think about Jeremiah 29, 11. 
when you talk about the purpose and the plan that he has for you, because you are listening to him and he gives you that destitute to multitude his glory for those who need him that are broken. Yeah, I've learned to really understand that. And, and, and then when I go back again to that word in him, Mm-hmm. It, it developed something of what he gave us. He gave us his only begotten son. Yeah. So that we don't have to keep perishing for something, but have something to glorify our own to. Yeah. So that we get to have that everlasting life. Yes. Because he paid the price. Yes. And uh, I love how Jeremiah 29, 11 follows Jeremiah 29, one through 10, where Jeremiah is basically telling the people, God wants you to know you're about to go into 70 years of captivity. So since you're going into this captivity, here's how I want you to do. I want you to pray for your captives. I want you to build your own families. I want you to go ahead, get married, build your houses, settle the land, work the land, prosper where you are Mm -hmm. because... I alone know the plan I have for you. Yes. Plans to prosper you and not yeah. for you. I've yeah. skipped plans to give you a future and a hope. So it, he didn't say that to Jeremiah when everything was peachy keen. He said it in a hard season. And when we are in our hard seasons, that's when God is saying, okay, follow me. Watch what I do with you in this hard place. And it's such a delight. Hmm. Yes, it is. It is always a delight in the process because as you say, the seven, and we looked at the seventh in the beginning, how things have to take a rest period to see the development of what we had to store for. Mm -hmm. And he brought it all together to let us see the beauty and the manifestation of his love that we now get to share in a different way when we truly take it in and listen to what he has done. Yes. So in him, we are safe. Let's yes. stop worrying. If we've, if we've given ourselves to Christ, stop worrying about am I saved and begin asking him how can you live out your salvation for yeah. his glory? And we could talk about this so long. I, every one of these nuggets is, is volumes thick in richness. And that's an important thing to do when we're mining the gold. There's another form of mining the gold that I want us to experience together today. That is mining the gold of creativity that God has placed within each one of us. That if we will maximize that creativity and give it to him, we will be used by him to make this world a better and more beautiful place for somebody along our journey. And that's the reason I have with me today, our guest, George Irvin. George, welcome to Mining the Gold. Thank you. It's good to be here. I would really like to say in all of this, it's it's an honor to do something that I never expected to see myself be doing. This journey, and as I looked at the book, Mining the Gold, I didn't realize how many nuggets I had in me to share. (laughs) But it's an opportunity to really see the development of what God has allowed me to become and do for him. And the humbleness and the patience to see what he wanted me to share. When I go back and I think about the time of doing cleaning, I never realized what it really meant. And I use an old paraphrase that I use and I tell pastors all the time. Are you a pig in mud? And they said, what do you mean by that? I said, if you're not willing to get dirty, you won't understand cleaning. And when I use that analogy in my cleaning, because everything that you touch that you have to clean 
is also dirty? And what is your perfection of doing something to allow it to become clean? So clean that people would say, wow, I've never seen it done like that before. Or the, is the expectation is set either at a grade A or you want a grade D. And then when I look at cleaning, I looked at myself, how far can I go in cleaning? When I developed myself into this, I didn't realize the, the strategy and the technique of doing cleaning what it takes. But if I realized and understood, I never realized until I started watching my mother do cleaning, how she took pride in her own. Being a mother of six, watching the development of her, when she didn't have electric stuff, she had to use a knife to edge a yard or some scissors to trim the edges because the knife went dull. She didn't look for help. She was the help because she relied on God. And watch her just take things and take some shears and prune the flowers and just make sure everything looked good. She showed me the pride of what she loved that the home was given to her. But the home that I learned to develop was, was her, not the home. She took care of the home and I watched her and then I learned to become part of the home. Learning that developmental skills, watching my mother have a fourth grade education level and I had to develop myself into doing things of sacrifice that I never thought I'd see myself do. But when it came down to a point of life that my mother sacrificed for her home. There was many times I get to see myself wondering how she does it on little income. Well, mining the gold has showed me some things about my past has engaged my future. It has showed me the magnificence of sacrifice, giving your all, keep learning, don't stop. Learn from everybody who's willing to share the love mm -hmm. so that you're able to apply the love and give the love to mm -hmm. those who want. It has a way of showing development in ways I never realized what it's like to be in cleaning. And when I think about it, it it's bringing tears to my eyes because those things are so unique in ways of appreciation from where you come from. Mm. I never realized when you needed something, how far are you willing to go to get it? But you had to learn the developmental skills first. Well, in cleaning, everything has an opportunity. And if you're not equal to the opportunity and didn't apply to your application, well, you didn't get the opportunity. And I've learned something about applying. I took the risk. And then something I didn't know, they was willing to help me learn because they saw the ambition of me wanting to learn more. Mm -hmm. And as I learned more, I asked for more. Learning how to go back in the days of Zares, department stores. A lot of people may not know that in these days and time, but Zares, <laughs> it was like Sears and Value City and places like that. But I never forget when I went in there to start buffing the floor in an apartment store on what it took. If you buff the floor with a propane buffer and you start seeing circles, you have to stop. And then you have to turn the gas off. You got to prop the machine up. You got to lay down on the ground. You got to scrape all that access off the pad and then move it out of the way and make sure it's all smooth so that you don't get burn marks in the floor because the floor needed expectational shine. And when you think of shine, most people don't realize what it takes to shine a floor. 
Mm-hmm. Hmm. But if the application was not applied right, you won't even get the shine from the get go. Mm-hmm. So I've learned the application was done right, but it's sustaining that shine of what it took. Most people can spray, but you have to mop it. Because if you shortcut it, you can pay the price and you spend more time. Well, when you think about that, everything has an application to it, as I said before. And when you look at life, you're that application. And when you apply that and you've you've magnitude to your highest of getting that shine that people love seeing, then you become a part of the shine because you no longer want to be dark. You want to see the light. That comes to cleaning glass. Most people don't like cleaning glass because it's always hard to do. When you think of glass, I, I love when people say, I can't get that greasy film off her. Well, did you learn the steps? Well, I did. I used Windex, but it still won't come out. Well, I learned a long time ago, you got to get palm olive. Or get some joy that's going to degrease it with some warm, lukewarm water. Take that access and put it on there. And then once you put it on there, you use that squeegee and just keep going, keep going to make sure that it's not there, then you take that squeegee and go across the sea, is is that fingerprint still there? The question is, if it's still there, are you still willing to work it to get it off? Now think about that and think about yourself. What's on you that you wanna get off? Are you willing to work it out? When I do cleaning, that's what I do. I see something wrong, I think what's inside me what's wrong so that I could fix what's inside so I could change my outside. Hmm. And cleaning has allowed me to develop who I am and what I want out of myself. And I will say, Denise, it has shown me when you asked me about this and I really took time to develop myself into the nugget, I did not realize how much I had to shine with. It has allowed me to see the investment of others seeing myself doing something I was proud of doing. Being in Middletown Christian Church, taking that level to the next level, being there, showing me how to go into training seminars, learning all the special equipment that's out there, showing that building, taking it to heights it never been before. And to allow people to walk in that facility and says, wow, this is beautiful. Even Ron Carmichael says, don't nobody, nobody knows how to do these floors like George does. Nobody can come in here and do these floors because it was a terrazzo floor. And, and it's a special way you have to do it. And it takes time to develop the skill. The excitement of watching the people coming to church to see that beautiful shine on the floor because I took pride in what I did. And that's why in my cleaning business, I always used to say in VCT floors or carpets or whatever the case may be in cleaning, let me take it to the next level. I take pride and if I can't do it, I'll be honest and tell you, you may need to replace it. Can you imagine sometimes inside us, we got to replace something because it don't wore out and you got to renew it again? When I see myself in these matters, we all get worn down, but yeah, we get an opportunity to renew. Mm-hmm. And that has been such a joy in cleaning for me and how it has took me to new ways I've never saw myself before. Learning those skills, building those relationships, being with others, seeing what I do and letting people just like, I love coming into a clean building. Thank you for what you do. For 23 and a half years, allowing a carpet to sustain itself for 23 years from 1999 on up to the time of my retirement, they never had to replace a carpet Hmm. because the energy and the equipment they got for me 
so that I can allow that place to be the most beautiful place that it could be. You know, growing up, my father was a cook for the local hospital. But on the side, he had a floor waxing thing. He probably, he talked about his customers, but he didn't really talk about his business, if you hear me. He, it, it was all about his customers and serving them. And, and I remember the day he had done enough with his floor waxing that he could buy his own floor waxing machine and how thrilled he was. Um, I never got the feeling that as a person who cleaned, that made my daddy somebody that you could look down on. And I never got the feeling that he felt like his his customers ever looked down on him. Rather, they looked up to him for what he was doing. Talk to us for a moment about the honor of labor, no matter what the field. Wow, an honor, wow. The prestige levels in so many various ways. I, I can go back to the time working downtown, doing high rise buildings, and the joy of me just doing cleaning again gave me the opportunity, a uh, man, to get the worst suits all day long <laughs> downtown. And being that manager over high rise accounts like PNC Tower, Aegon Building, National City Towers, Civics Building, the Federal Building. I have been a blessing to be in all of these buildings and to work with so many people that were having trouble in their areas. But what I learned is it takes time and development to build that relationship to get others to be what you are. And I really want to say the honor in all that I've been doing all my life in the cleaning is, A, invest in my time when something is wrong and making it right. Two, it allowed me to see when a person said they did something, but the customer sees that they didn't do it, and then you bring it back to them and says, look, the customer will never lie on something that you're supposed to do. Let's work together to get it right. And then I'll come back and follow up with a visit mm -hmm. because I want you to love what you do. I don't want to let you go. I want to work with you. Mm -hmm. You know, the magnitude of really caring about the honor of watching someone see that you care about them. And then when you took that time and effort and when you need something done and that person took the, the time to say, I'll do whatever you ask. That's because you took the time of working with them mm -hmm. and giving them an opportunity to make more money because they knew how to take care of the building. Because one thing I learned is when you help someone develop something, that's because no one took the time to teach them the right way. And lots of times you can put your trust in them, but yet they get lazy, but yet you bring them back to reality. It's a consistent thing. And that relationship building was a key component in, in so many of my lives. And when I go back around and talk to people, they say, thank you for just checking on the building, letting us see that you really care about what your people are doing in here. I said, thank you, it's an honor. Well, the honor came so gracious that I was the first manager with the less complaints in all the high-rise buildings. So the head guy from Chicago came down, the, the company that I was working for was Lakeside Building Maintenance. And the head guy that came down that was kind of the overseer of all the accounts in Louisville's name was Gary. I, I forgot Gary's last name. 
But my overseas person was Charles Jones. And it was such a unique way when they got together and they got talking about me. And he said, what is it that you do to have such less complaints? I said, I build relationships with people. I take time to work with the people. And I check on all the tenants to make sure that the work is being done. That is such a glory. And ever since then, invest in myself and then again, continue to excel myself in seminars, learning how to value yourself for customers, looking for those appreciated things, not just a pat on the back, but really putting the work in to help people see what you're all about. Mm -hmm. And that honesty and truth has allowed me to see the gratitude on and through my life. Amazing. Life is so much about attitude because there is no unimportant work. And the work sounds like for you was not secondary, but it was secondary. It, it wasn't the focus on I got to clean this building. It was, I've got to, I get to serve the people in this building by cleaning. And suddenly, you know, when you keep your eyes on the people and how you're helping them, you recognize the value of the chore that helps them. And I, I thank you for bringing that up for us. We're gonna hear more from George in the next three sessions of Mining the Gold. The Mining the Gold podcast goes live on Facebook and YouTube each Tuesday and Thursday morning at 7 a.m. Eastern time. That's New York time for those of you who might be out of the United States. We invite you to continue to come back and meet our various guests to hear our devotional messages. And when you hear something that makes an impact on you, please invite a friend, encourage others to watch us, like us or follow us or subscribe on YouTube so that you get notifications each time a new episode goes live. You can go directly to us on www.facebook.com slash mining the gold or on YouTube by following bit.ly slash mining the gold podcast YT. Mining the gold is more than a podcast. It's actually a book of 192 of these short readings systematically ordered so that you can gain a in-depth view of who God is and what a precious gift he offers us when we walk with him in Christ Jesus. And so I encourage you to look at Mining the Gold and its sister book, Nuggets of Gold, which takes the same 190 plus thoughts and turns them into reflective questions so that you can learn for yourself how well am I appropriating this opportunity that God has opened for me. There is also the power of our relationship, which is com combines the formats of devotional message and reflective questions around 15 relationships that we get to enjoy as we walk on this earth, knowing our God or not knowing our God and, and wanting to just make those relationships better. Okay, spoiler alert, the best relationships are built around your own relationship to God. But these books are available at bit.ly slash Denise Books or on amazon.com. You can email me at dwattswilson at gmail.com. Rest assured, I read my emails and I answer my emails. You can also use this QR code to go directly to the pages to purchase these books. I encourage you to 
just go ahead and take a screenshot of everything you see in front of you right now, because that will allow you to harvest some of the most important information of this session. And that is the contact information for today's guest, George Irvin, Clean and G's Services, LLC. His email is g.irvin39 at yahoo.com. I'm sure he'll be glad to hear from you. George, I do thank you for investing this time to be with us on Mining the Gold. Thank you, Denise. It's always good to do this and uh, the joy of being with you. And I was sitting here and I was contemplating on the books that you was illustrating and how it all came to affect my mind. And when we're nuggets for gold and we're trying to find ourselves collectively, but what we have to do in the mining of the gold, we have to go into the coal mine to find those nuggets. And then going in depth, finding ourselves. And then it, what it does is as you go inside, you get to build that relationship with God. I really like the format of how you have developed the usage of yourself and the way God is giving you the ability to write these books. Uh, I praise God of how I can just look at your titles and come very collectively in what he's doing in your life. Thank you for having me to be a part of this. Thank you, George. A special thank you to my grandson, Grayson, who composed the music for Mining the Gold. And a thank you to Roy Dominique, my literary agent, who has done amazing work to maximize these books and is working to take them as far as God will allow them to go. We look forward to seeing you on our next session of Mining the Gold. Thank you for spending these moments with us. And may I encourage you every day to keep mining the gold of God's word and his creativity within you. Mm -hmm.